Hello everyone! Today we will prepare three dishes from street cuisine from all different countries. In general, it would be very interesting. Let's go! The first for today is a Peking duck. This is probably the most unusual way of cooking duck. It is included in the 100 dishes that you need to try while you're alive. In general, it's a truly legendary dish. First, the duck is butchered, but not regularly, but through an incision under the wing. Then a compressor is inflated under the skin, dip it in syrup, and dry the duck for about two hours under a fan. A plug is inserted into the duck, and it is filled with broth. After that, it is sent into the oven. Periodically, it is lifted and driven over the fire, and it is the apple chips that burn there to give the duck a slight smoked flavor. And only after all of this is our Peking duck ready. Now let's recreate it. Firstly, it was difficult to find an unpeeled duck. We feel the softest place under its wing and make an incision. Through this incision, we completely empty out the duck. By the way, there was an egg inside of it, even at the stage of its formation. Who didn't know this is what it looks like? So we cleaned out three ducks. We cut at the joint of the legs. We break it. And cut it. Similarly with the last phalanx of the wing, it is very thin, so it'll just bust. The duck is prepared. Now we need a compressor. Turn it on to get some air into the balloon. Now we take the gun. We push it under the skin from the side of the neck and inflate the duck. What we need here is for the skin to separate, and then it was super crispy. That's it, now we pierce the inflated duck with a hook through the neck. Now you need to make a special mixture. It consists of water, salt, and a large amount of sugar. Now we turn on the fire, and we put all this on to heat up. As soon as it boils, you can dip the ducks in the liquid and ladle some over on top of it. We hang the ducks out to dry, direct a fan at them, and just let it blow. The crust will dry out and excess moisture will leave it. After two hours, we water it again with our mixture. And again, we hang it out to dry. While the duck is drying out, we'll make our broth. Pour about one and a half liters of water into a saucepan. Open up some soy sauce and pour in 50 milliliters. In order not to collect the spices separately, you can take a mixture from old wine. There is everything you need. Star anise, cinnamon, cloves, and ginger. And the last thing is soy paste. Squeeze out a third of a bag this size. Additionally, we salted it. We're not pickling the duck. It should be salty enough thanks to the broth. That's it, the broth is ready. Now pour it into a convenient kettle. We take three wine corks and plug the duck up with them. That way the broth doesn't leak out later. Pour the broth into the hole under the wing. We will cook our ducks in a tandoor. The principle of cooking in it is similar to an oven. The walls also heat up, and only then they give heat to the duck. We're gonna take some firewood and throw it directly into the tandoor. Open up the vent, unscrew the gas in the burner, and set it on fire. We direct the burner to the firewood through the blower. Thanks to the good traction, everything flared up really quickly. The burner can be removed, cover the tandoor with the lid on top, and let it warm up too. An hour and a half later, the firewood is burned through. We close the vent and put in a grate. We remove the ducks and lower them into the tandoor. 
And in order to have a small smoking effect, as from the fire in the oven, we soaked apple chips in water in advance. Now drain the water and pour the chips onto the coals. Let it smoke. Cover with a small lid and wait, occasionally glancing at it. An hour has passed and our ducks are ready. Just look at how glossy our ducks turned out when they're cooked in this way. We pull the cork out so that the broth flows out of it. Professionals cut the meat directly to shavings. In order to not lose the meat, I will first cut off the breasts. Just look at how juicy that meat is, and it's all thanks to the broth inside. Cut it into pieces so that there is both meat and a crispy crust. We transfer the sliced meat to a plate. And we can try it. I can say with confidence that this is the best delicious duck I've ever tasted. It is so juicy, and the crust is so crispy and caramelized. In its pure form, we tried it. And now let's try how it's served in restaurants. We'll slice up some cucumber. Cut into a leek, lengthwise, and into thin strips. We take a flatbread, grease it with sauce. Each restaurant has its own sauce recipe, so just take a store-bought good barbecue. Chopsticks take a piece of duck. We smear the sauce with it. And we spread out two more pieces on the flatbread. Now add some leeks and two strips of cucumber. We twist all this into like a mini taco. And we try it. Oh yeah, this is the perfect combination. No wonder restaurants serve it this way. And thus we have recreated the Peking duck. Our next dish is also from China, namely Hong Kong waffles. The dough is poured into a special waffle iron. The waffle iron turns over, and when everything is ready, it is taken out, filled with ice cream or whipped cream, and all sorts of fruits, for example, strawberries, sprinkled with powdered sugar and sprinkled with the topping. We also have such waffle shops here. Therefore, I am sure you've definitely seen this. For the dough, we break one egg into a bowl. We measure out 115 grams of flour on the scales and throw that in there as well. Now 27 grams of starch, some baking powder, and add 10 grams. A little bit of sugar. Pour 100 milliliters of milk into a measuring cup and the same amount of water. And back into the mass. Add some vanilla flavor, open it up, and add a couple of drops into the bowl. Beat all this dough with a mixer. Cut off 50 grams of butter. Send this into the saucepan and melt it. Then pour this into the dough. And mix again. The dough is ready. Pour this into a measuring cup to make it more convenient. Now we take our waffle iron, open it up, and fill these round little cells with a thin trickle. Now you can stuff them with your filling. Therefore, we will have to ruin our background for the video a little by stealing a pack of M&Ms from there. Open it up, and throw one piece into each cell. Now pour some dough on top. Smear it around. and close the waffle iron. After a couple of minutes, we open it up and take out our waffle. We transfer this to a paper cup and we give the shape in which you want the waffle to cool down. We decided to make a second waffle for chocolate. Therefore, add a little bit of cocoa to the dough and stir. Then pour that battery dough into a waffle iron and shut it up. Now we turn it over 
We wait until the dough is cooked and open it. This waffle turned out even more beautiful than the last one. We also put it into a cup and form it. For the filling, we're gonna use whipped cream first. For the white waffle, cut some strawberries into four parts and spread it out on top. The second one is topped with caramel topping. And as a filling, we're gonna use these tubes and Oreo cookies. And all that's left is to sprinkle with it all with powdered sugar. That's it, our Hong Kong waffles are ready. Let's get some of that whipped cream with the topping. And we break off a piece of the waffle and we eat it. So sweet and delicious. And I mean, it's even tastier with strawberries and M&Ms inside the waffles. This is in general, the sweet paradise of every child. And now for the last part, this is hashimaki. Liquid dough is poured onto a hot surface. While it still hasn't a time to set, sprinkle with stuffing. As a rule, it is chicken with vegetables. Then these pancakes are turned over and wrapped into two sticks. And then they pour some mayonnaise on top. Sprinkle some ginger on there, cheese, or green onions on there. And you're left with a really salty pancake with stuffing on a stick. Let's try and do this. It's actually really simple. Let's start with the filling. We're gonna need some chicken fillets. We take two pieces and put them in a bowl. Over the barbecue sauce. Pour it all over the chicken. Also add some pepper and salt. And we just mix this around with our hands. We put the frying pan on the fire and shift our breasts into it. After two minutes, we turn it over and wait another two minutes. Now you can put the fillets in the oven for another 10 minutes. In the meantime, let's do the vegetables. Ordinary white cabbage, cut it in half, and cut it into thin strips. And now all this needs to be thoroughly diced. Some green onions, and we just finally dice it. And the last stop is the carrot. We clean it off. Cut it into slices. And then finally dice. Done. We throw all these vegetables into one bowl. By this time, the chicken has already reached its temperature. So we take it out of the frying pan and cut it first into strips. Then into cubes. And chunks. We send the meat into the same bowl as the vegetables. Mix it all up. and our filling is ready. Let's move on to our dough. We need two eggs. We break them into a bowl. And to make our pancakes cheesy, we'll add some cheese additive for popcorn. I'll only add a tablespoon. Mix it up all well. Add some flour, a little less than the egg mixture in volume. Pour in the water and mix. It's necessary to balance with water and flour until an absolutely smooth and liquid dough comes out. We put two tablespoons of dough into a preheated frying pan and spread it out. While it still isn't a time to set, sprinkle the filling on it to completely cover the surface of the dough. Now we wait for it to sit and turn it over. Now we need some sushi sticks. Without breaking them, but slightly unbending, we clamp the dough and wind up the pancake. And we're left with something like this. Do it one more time. When everything is ready, top your hashimaki with some mayonnaise. And sprinkle with green onions. And we're left with exactly the same thing as it was in Japan. It looks super awesome. Let's try it. This thing really surprised me. Despite the fact that all the products are really basic, the taste is really unusual. 
You can't even say that the filling is chicken and vegetables. If you would like us to continue on with this kind of content, then just give this video a thumbs up. I wonder what's the biggest number of likes my subscribers can get in one day.